Hi, I'm Nigel. This is my second video about my search for an electric car. I currently have a fossil car and I'm looking to go electric and uh, I thought I'd post a few videos about uh, my journey and the information and decisions that I find along the way. Crack is here again, joining me on the sofa. He seems to like joining me every time I'm doing a video. The lie I wanted to talk about was battery size and battery capacity because I see too many reviews now where they start the review by saying here's the latest and greatest whatever, whether it be Leaf or Kona or anything, and then they mention the battery size. And in the same sentences they're talking about performance and efficiency. And of course performance and efficiency aren't dictated by battery size. Range is the issue, and this is where I think we've got a legacy issue, um, that we are concerned about range and range anxiety, and therefore that's the headline information that they're giving us about the cars. What we really need is information about the efficiency of the car, and I, I want to explain why I think this is. Um, battery size is basically no different than fuel tank size. and when, when, when you're looking at a fossil car to buy, why would you be concerned about fuel tank size? The first things you do is not go to the brochure and check at the back to see what the fuel tank size is. We're just not interested in it. It's appropriate. It's, uh, it's enough to do the job. And that's what's going to happen with electric cars. We're not going to be as concerned about range anymore because they're going to cross that boundary, probably the 200 mile boundary for electric range. And at that point we're really not going to be that interested. What, so what will we be interested in? And if you follow what's happened with fossil cars, it's the efficiency of the car, it's the miles per gallon of the car. So we'll be interested in the electric equivalent, which is the miles or kilometres per kilowatt of electricity. And that's what we'll be interested in. So why don't we see more reviews based on the efficiency of the car and the comparison of what's efficient and what's not? I mean, would you really go out and buy a car that had a 100 litre fuel tank uh, in diesel or petrol, but then only did 10 or 20 miles to the gallon. No, you know, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be influenced if they double the size of the fuel tank. You're really not interested. The fact that it does 10 or 20 miles to the gallon is not good, and you, you're not going to be interested in that car for that reason. So it's the same with electric cars. As electric cars move on, and we get used to the range, I won't say issues, but we get used to the range that we get from electric cars, we won't be interested in the battery size anymore, we'll be interested in the efficiency. And this is where you can talk about whether an electric car is green or not. Look at the Toyota Prius when it first came out. You know, everyone was raving about it and labelling it as green. But now you've got diesel cars that are more efficient than those Priuses. So does that mean that a Prius isn't green and a diesel car is green? You know, it's about using less resources. The fewer resources you use, um, then the greener the car is. So, with that in mind, <coughs> which cars are green and which aren't? Uh, imagine a scenario where there are no fossil cars left anymore, but they're all electric. So, if there are no fossil cars, then we'll be viewing and comparing information about what's available. And at the moment, Tesla are like the V8 gasoline guzzlers that we currently have. Uh, they might be considered V8 muscle cars of the electric world. And is that right? Is that what um, those cars are or will become in our view, in our mindset? In which case, why are people buying them now and saying they're going green? Does it matter that they use... Um, twice as much electricity to travel the same distance as other cars. If you want to be green, surely the amount or the degree of how green you, you want to be is how much compromise you're going to make. Um, because what's the comparison? You know, instead of having a fossil car of a BMW 5 Series, you might go and buy a Tesla Model S, um, which obviously doesn't use fossil fuels. It uses renewables, especially if you've got solar on your roof and those sort of things. But it, are you still being green? if you then don't care about how many kilowatts of electricity you're using? Do you not care about using twice as much as another car could be? So being green might be going to a car that is much more efficient or a smaller car. So are, are Teslas green or not? Um, or are they the gas guzzlers? In which case once we remove all of the actual fossil cars from the forecourts and we're only buying electric cars, our view will be different. Our view will be different based on what's available. 
and the most efficient cars will seem to be the green cars, and the cars that aren't efficient will be cars like the Teslas, the giant cars, the big cars, the big SUVs, um, because they're heavier and less efficient. And I think Tesla's got a bit of a problem because they're focused on battery size. They keep releasing releasing the cars with the P60, P75, P80, P90, P100. You know, it's battery capacity. They're focusing headline figures on how big the battery is. And they're completely masking and not telling us about the efficiency and whether the efficiency of the car is getting any better or it's actually getting worse. Now, some people disagree with what I'm saying. They won't agree, saying that, well, if you're using renewable energy sources, you're green, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But are we going to be viewing um, people that are driving Teslas that don't care about how many resources and how many kilowatts of electricity they're using? Uh, are we going to view those people as green? Or are they going to be ungreen, or whatever the term is for it? Um, is, is that just how our society is? When we have an abundance of something, so we have, if we have an abundance of uh, renewable energy sources, then we don't care about how many of those we consume. Well, isn't that the same philosophy about fossil fuels and oil and petrol? When there was an abundance and nobody cared, we were just consuming as much as we like. It doesn't matter. It's only about the cost. And it's only when, when cost becomes an issue, or when the overconsumption of resources becomes an issue, that we then view that we've got to do something about it. So are the Tesla cars, which are the least efficient cars on the market at the moment, are they going to become the uh, V8 gas guzzlers of the future? Are they going to become not green cars? Are they going to be considered the cars for performance enthusiasts and for executives who don't care about the resources they're using? In which case, it seems rather odd that there are people now who are saying they're green and gone green and they're, they're buying Teslas um, so the issue perhaps is at the time the Tesla was considered green and was green to what was comparable and what was available but in reality as time moves forward and it seems to be moving very quickly what's green isn't going to be green in the future and Prius, the original Priuses aren't really green anymore and I predict that uh, Teslas won't be considered green either going forward. And I'll explain that uh, more in another video coming um, with the statistics that I found on the UK government website. And that proves that Teslas are the worst um, and least efficient cars uh, on the market in the UK. Okay, that's it for now. Um, I think I've covered enough about battery capacity and my thoughts that that's misleading. And uh, the point about Teslas perhaps being the most inefficient uh, EVs out there, um, which obviously I can't afford them, so I won't be buying them. But I don't think I would even if I could buy them, um, based on the efficiency issue. I'm looking for something a little bit more efficient. I just also want to say that these videos are just my opinion. I know not everyone's going to agree. I know there will be people that think I'm a boring old git, I don't know what I'm talking about, and that's fine. Um, so long as some people think that I'm adding to the community and adding to the conversation about EVs and what EV car to buy, that's all I'm trying to do. And I hope you enjoy the video, um, I hope it's helped a little bit, and I hope you want to subscribe in the future. Um, click subscribe, there are more videos to come, the next one hopefully will be about the Tesla performance um, that I've found on the UK government site, I'll post that detail, and uh, there's more to come after that. Um, I'll try to be a little slicker in what I do, I'll try to be a little bit more confident in the videos, um, so please bear with me, um, I just hope the subject matter and the content sparks um, some interest in your minds. Thank you, bye.